Hi there, good to be with you today. Welcome to Cruising with the Stars. And what a star I have for you today. Now, here's a star who I have seen perform at various venues throughout the country and is uh, very, very big indeed uh, in Marbella and in Spain, all different parts of that area. He is probably one of the world's leading female impersonators. It is Terry Fox. Lovely oh, yeah. to have you here nice today. To be here. Rick, you look fab. Thank you. That hair is to die for. Thank you. Well, I don't know who does it because I'm never there when it's being done. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Now, you have been sort of delighting audiences all over the world for over 30 years. Yeah. And I know that your credentials are incredible. You've appeared oh, wow. at places like Madame Jojo's, yeah. Funny Girls. It is, it, it, it's a real... Um, I have it's to correct a, you there, I've never on. appeared at Funny Girls. Have you not no. appeared at Funny Girls? No, because they only do that mine thing. Oh, but and you so, sing, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I can't do That's that. right, Funny Girls. And I can't do dance like that neither. Oh, They're I fabulous, I but I can't say, do all that with that. my <laughs> age with my legs go. No. <laughs> Your legs are pretty good, <laughs> I believe. But you, you, you've performed in so many sort of first, first rate, first class yeah. uh, venues, and you are so you're so well known in the world of female impersonation. What on earth made you start it? What, what did you want to be oh, when you were little? So did you want? I, can I remember mean, when I was at school, and they said to me, oh, <coughs> "Gosh, I must have been about five, which was yeah, way, way, way back." And Where uh, were you I brought up? What area? Manchester. Oh, Manchester right. Manchester for a short time. We yeah. lived. My parents lived abroad a lot, so right. I travelled the world all my life. So, well, what did your parents do to live abroad a lot? Absolutely. No, everybody says that to me, and they all think yeah. I was. Gonna, I'm going to say something really glamorous. And they didn't. My dad was a bus driver. Oh, right. <laughs> but it yeah. wasn't. But they owned businesses abroad. We we were one of the people that went in the, the ten pound packages to. Australia yeah. in the early 60s and then yeah. in the 70s my parents bought the very first English bar in Mallorca that was ever open. Wow. So What was um, it called? But it was called the Tudor Bar in Magaluf when Magaluf was one road. Magaluf? And there was oh. no concrete on the floors, it was dirt tracks, it yeah. was absolutely outraged. I went to school there. Yeah, really? So, yeah. Do, do, do you have fond memories of that? Very, story? very, yeah. very, very fond memories. So are you bilingual? You spoke, yeah, yeah, I'm very good with both languages. Yeah. yeah. So w w when you were little and people were saying, do you want to be a bus driver like yeah, Daddy? No, <laughs> no. My dad said that was a coal miner and I certainly wasn't being that. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what did you think you were going to be? I don't know. When I first left school, I was, I was going to go into catering. That was, what, that was the, the thing I was going to do. And I was going to be a teacher. Yeah. I was actually going to be a cookery teacher. Yeah. And I entered a talent course competition and I won and how I was old only were you 16. then? 16. And I was lying about do? how old I was yeah. <laughs> and I actually sung Bobby's Girl yeah. um, at Fagin's oh. nightclub in Manchester. Oh I Remember used Fagin's, to love yeah. Fagin's, chicken and in it a was basket. There, yeah, chicken in a basket, yeah. Fagin's and I entered the talent competition and I won and the prize was um, it was so much money I think it was about 50 quid then which was like the earth. That's it a lot the of money then. Earth. Yeah. And um, it was a four-month contract with another female impersonator who had a road show called Bunny Lewis. Yeah. And I went to work for Bunny Lewis now, and, and I lied for years and years. And years. That's why people think I'm vastly older than I am. Right. Because I used to have to say I was 21. Right. Because you had to be 21 to get into clubs of then. Of course you did. Yes, I forgot about yeah, that. So I had well, to lie. You, you that say that you, you, you went in as a female impersonator and did Bobby's Girl, Susan Morn's mm. great, great hit. But, but at what age did you start dressing up? Then. It was no, but well, you know, I mean, oh, I'd, you... I'd, I'd run around the house in stilettos and God knows what else all my life. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But once I got to, once I was sixteen, I decided I, I entered this talent competition and I won it. It was really that was that it. That sealed it. That That's sealed the deal. And then when I realised I could actually make money out of it as well. Yeah. yeah. And in the back of my head, all my life, I'd wanted to be in show business. Yeah. Really, secretly. But yeah. you know, if you're from a working class background, that you don't, you don't yeah. sit there and say, "Oh, I want to be in show business." No. It's not like today they do. No. But in my day, you just didn't. You no. did what followed suit with everybody well, we, else. We're going to take a quick look at you now in oh, action. Good. Just a little teaser. Here we mm. go.
I tell you something, you, you're beating share on the figure stakes oh, there, yes. and yours is all real, isn't it? Yeah, no, well, it's not. I've had a lot of help. Have you had a little bit of help? Say, yes, a little bit of help around the gills and around the waist. <laughs> Around the gills. Yeah, there's more bits of me on the cutting room floor than there is on me anymore. <laughs> Funnily enough, I was looking at my gills this morning. I was thinking, I think I'm oh, going to. Oh, I do it every day, and I think I oh, should have a little bit more and a little bit more from there. But I'm just frightened if I have it pulled too far, I'll have a beard. <laughs> So, no. <laughs> well, you look smashing. That was that. That was a good little sort of tease about what you do. So, when you were, as you say, when you were a little lad, did you have brothers or sisters? No, no. So you were an only child. Yeah. And how how did your mum and dad take this sort of? I don't know. I mean, I'm uh, not sure of the terminology. Cross dressing. Well, it trans. was. It was. They did. They weren't really <laughs> that shot because for a long time I didn't really tell them I kept yeah. a day job as yeah. well which yeah. again in those days you had to do very of few course, people decided yeah. oh well, that's it and I'll go into the clubs and yeah. all the rest of it and the clubs didn't pay that well then no so I kept a day job for quite some time till I was about 20 Three ish, right? And then I actually just thought, What I sort can't of day job did you two. keep, Terry? Oh, god, I did all sorts. Everything I worked for, I can't name the names of the stores, but I worked for a well known department store in Liverpool, yes. And they had another one in Manchester, and I worked there, yeah. And I worked for a clothes store, and then I became a florist, and I opened a florist shop, and yeah. I started to train to be a hairdresser, yeah. Everything you mention it, I've and, done. And it. did you find it hard? Each morning, getting up and doing the male thing, were you just desperate to get yeah, into was, your nice, it was, feminine it, outfits? Mm, mm, no, because that makes it look like how it, it was transvestitism, and there is a big difference. But it, it was the stage was always the draw. Really, I had no dedication to daytime work. Right, I've got to be honest and truthful. I went because I needed the money. Yeah, but yeah. I had no dedication towards it at all. Once I got to work, yeah. Work was at night time. Right. And, that's when I and that was the work. love of your yeah. life. Can you explain to us, just because I think a lot of viewers, I mean, I look at you now and you're all beautifully made up and everything. What is the difference? Or what do you perceive the difference to be? E, what being... time's this going out? Uh, <laughs> well, between being a transvestite and being a female impersonator. Big difference. I do this for an act. Yeah. I portray. A woman yeah. slightly larger than life. Yeah. I want it to be fantasy. Yes. Not, you know, there's no point going and looking at Mrs. Smith from the corner shop. That's no. not fancy. So no, I you am, want to see I am the, the, Yeah, the, 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 the over the time. Fair enough, this is quite a played down little Chanel number, but the rest of the time it's very over the top on stage. Yeah. But um, transvestites are usually men that like for their own self gratification, should right. we say, like right. wearing the gear. Right, and, I get um, it. So to me, you, it's my uniform for work. And if you I, I and, and if you didn't wear, if you didn't do that for a job, it um, it wouldn't bother you not being able to dress like that. No, 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 ah. because I'm not like this 24 hours a day. Right. So when when you what, what are you, when you are in your ordinary male clothes, you, I, I can't imagine you see as a man. I can't imagine your well, face. That's, that's good. Yeah, I can't imagine. And I'm doing it well. Yeah, you look like loads of my girlfriends, actually. They kill me. They yeah. kill me if they heard me say that. We don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, not Debbie Dorgan, you cheeky devil. Dan has just said, my, my lovely buzzy mate, Debbie Dorgan, he's just said her name. <laughs> Deb, no, darling, no. I mean, no, no. Deb is larger than life and blonde right, and the makeup really? and the pearls and oh, everything. Right. You know, she's a gorgeous girl. She is. She's absolutely lovely. So once you started uh, and you found that there was money to be made because I know exactly what you mean. A lot of people that I've spoken to um, that are in their sort of 40s uh, onwards, they've said they didn't realise you could make money as a, well, I, I think a, if you're from careful, a working yeah. class. I think you've got to be careful of, of saying making money because it does annoy me in this industry yeah. today that the kids go in it to be, first of make all nowadays, living, they say. want to say, uh, they don't want to be in show business, they want to be famous. It's yes, the big thing now, which and, well. uh, really irritates the life out of me. I want to snap yeah, the neck. Me too. Um, you've got to be in this business because you love the business yeah, and yeah. you're not going to make money from day one. No. It's a damn hard business to it be is, in. It's it very is. competitive. No matter what genre of show business you're in, from mm. being any form, you are not going to make money from day one unless no. you're very lucky. It's few and far between. Yeah. You've got to suffer the bad. It's with like the good. it says in fame. You've got to work, and this is where, where you, you start, start paying. paying. And that's why yeah. I still agree with paying your dues of doing the clubs and working yeah. your way up. I don't agree with X Factor and no. TV quiz shows because that is instant fame. Yes, and then and, and the problem it. is, you haven't got the underpinning 
of how to handle an audience, no. how to interact no. with an audience. No, you've got to be able to do that. And you've how to handle to. rejection. Oh, yeah. Because there's so much of that. Oh, isn't there's it? more rejection than, than, than you know, acceptance. Yeah. Far, 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 far more. Yeah, I, far I think more. you're absolutely right there. And that's the bit that hurts. Yeah. And if you can't come to terms no. that you're going to And get that's that. when I think they start to go a bit flaky because yeah. they can't Well, listen, them. we're going to come back and have a continue on very interesting chat in a minute. We're just going to take a very quick break. And then we'll be back with Terry in just two minutes after this. Hi there, today I'm chatting to a wonderful female impersonator, Terry Fox. Do you know, I've just remembered, this might be, uh, you might know this, do you ever remember a club in Liverpool called Sadie's? Oh, I do. That was my cousin's club. I, it wasn't. It was Mike, and Mike Goodwin. We used to be married to my cousin, Margaret oh. Goodwin. Oh, that's and just made me go cold. Has it? Yeah. Well, and there was Carol, an arc welder. Yeah. Who was a... Who was a, a yeah. Uh, I've, I've God, I used to go to Sadie's and Arthur. Oh, Sadie and her, Sadie's friend, Bella Roberts. Yeah. Used to run around in dragging carpet slippers. That's right. Oh, that was hysterical. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And, and, and just for our viewers, Sadie, I'm pretty sure... Was an arc welder from Camelot. That's right, yeah, from yeah. Camelot. So, and he, and, and he, had, he was done up, you yeah, know, yeah. female, you know, done up in, oh. in, in women's clothes. And he had these big arc welder's hands. Yeah. And hands in like those coal days. Shovels. Yeah, like coal shovels. Mm -hmm. And he had these huge, that when you used to buy them from Woolworths and stick them on with Evo sticks. That's right. These big red talons, yeah. you know. And he, and he had a voice like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the Isn't day. It funny? <laughs> oh. Those because a I, small world. Well, I used to. T I was only sixteen, and I used to lie about my age. And uh, I, I, my mum thought I was staying with my cousin Margaret, and I was. But what she didn't realise is I'd go and I'd serve behind the bar at the uh, at the, the drag club. It was fab. It, oh, it was just uh, funny, funny I days. I see it now with all the doilies on the glass shelves behind the That's bar. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a small, small oh. world that is. But from places like that, I mean, you've uh, made appearances at the Savoy, the Dorchester, Claridge's. Mm, yeah. What are the audiences Beautiful. like there for you? The same for me, yeah. luckily. Luckily, I'm, I'm very blessed that people do follow me yeah. wherever I am. I yeah. might not be... A lot of people believe to be famous, you've got to be on television all the time. Yeah, it was no. never my genre, to be honest, yeah. truthful. Um, and my audiences do follow me, no yeah. matter where I am. So, you know, there could be Mrs Smith from Rochdale. I'll turn yes. up at the Dorchester and she's saved up all year Aww. if I was working there to go and see me. Isn't there, that so. lovely? I know, I so, know. So there's such faithfulness. Great. Oh, oh yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's lovely, Every isn't holiday it? abroad and they seem to remember me. The only thing is, I'm, the older I'm getting, I don't remember everybody now. No. <laughs> and it's awful. And I always say, well, you've met me. I've met 52,000 people this year. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. I can't remember every one of you. But yeah. a lot of people do. Yeah. As soon as I see the face, I can't remember the name. I think, oh, I saw I know, you at such a place. And then I'll turn up in America to work. And they're there. And so where do you oh. work in America? I was in Las Vegas two years ago. Yeah. Um, and I was... Last year, I was in Fort Lauderdale because I yeah. have a home there. Right. So I go to Fort Lauderdale and I work the clubs in Fort Lauderdale for Brilliant. A few so, months, uh, and do you find so that you, you can keep on going back to the clubs in yeah, Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, always. I just pick the phone up and say, I'll be there such and such a day. Yeah. It used to be when I lived in when I lived in Marbella, we'd go away for the whole of November, most yeah. of December, and come back to Spain for Christmas. But yeah. I was there for nearly two months of the year, right. so I'd work all over the states. And does your act translate as well yes. in America? Yes, my, does my act here? does because I do two completely different shows. I do a stand-up show, oh, right. and then I also do the Ladies of Legend show. So right. it's it's tribute after tribute after tribute, very a la Danny LaRue, um, but a much more up to date version yeah. of that. Um, so that does translate. There's right. only certain people I do that I just have to miss out in the states because they don't quite know who it is. Even right, they don't get it. Stars, maybe they don't quite yeah. get it because I'm very yeah. well known for doing Dusty Springfield, and Dusty wasn't uh, as big in the states. No, as she was in the UK, and because she was my friend for so long. Yeah. I want to have her in everywhere. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I'm educating them. Yes. <laughs> Slowly yeah. but surely. I'm schooling them on yeah, certain yeah. things. Yeah. So if we can just go back, when you started, um, when you realised that you could actually make a living, you mm. could be professional, and you know you worked very hard. What in those days? Because you know it's a, it's a it's a, a fair few years ago. 
what was how were female impersonators received by the audiences in in those days um, were there many around because it's only think like danny was, larue really the, yes there of. was there was uh, of the fame factor yeah there was only D danny was the top yeah um, but there was there was what i always perceived as the, the pub yeah drag acts and, right. and i think the northwest of england liverpool manchester we bred them really thousands right. thousands and thousands and thousands yeah. that were at different stages of fame be it in the club circuit or the pub circuit or yeah. whatever so yes there was a lot about but it was a very very different game then very different my first paid gig when i was on my own i went out and i always remember it was five pounds yeah that was your wage and where was five it that you... it was in a pub in salford yeah yeah and it was the first time I was on my own without the road show. And I got there and it was five pounds and two drinks. Yeah. Pay me. And I didn't drink alcohol then. No. So uh, I, I got there and I did the show, which was 35 minutes long. That was your set piece. Yeah. And I came off stage and they said, Deb, you were rubbish. Come <gasps> back next week and we might pay you. And I had to walk home. I didn't even have bus fare. Oh, And I had to walk you. home. And I was teetering through the streets in my stilettos and suitcase of drag. And that made me harder to think, well, why? Yeah. wasn't that good so yes. I went and watched other acts and thought yeah. oh, well I can do it better than that and I can do that better than that and I learnt my trade yeah so when I went back I did get paid yeah yeah oh you poor miserable yeah. so and then years so later I bought the pub and not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> revenge is a dish it always best tastes served lovely. cold yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> I've bought it here's the wrecking ball <laughs> yeah. right we're going to take another look now at Terry Fox in action Oh, wonderful. And you, unlike a lot of the artists in places like Funny Girls, Madame Jojo's, they're more dancers and they mime. Yeah. You sing. Well, I had my, my own show at Jojo's, which ran for over 12 months. Yeah. Um, when I was 27, it was my first big yeah. break. Yeah. But that was a, a live show. And I didn't dance. I mean, and I. I had very good credentials at the time. I had Stuart Morris to direct the show that was Shirley wow. Bassey's director and yeah. Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. Um, Chris Bulldog from Starlight Express, I insisted on to do the choreography. Right. And he gave up on me <gasps> after about four weeks. He said, you just stand in the middle down and look pretty. Yeah. And everybody will work around you. It looks like you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I it did. Looks as if you can move yeah, well, a I bit. can move and yeah, I can right. follow rhythm, but yeah. I, I'm, I've got two left feet. I'm dyslexic, and I blame it on that I, right. because I'm dyslexic. Yeah. I think I can't follow choreography. There's a word for it, um, actually. There's a clumsiness yeah. if you are dyslexic. Yeah, you can sometimes be quite clumsy. Yeah, I well, am very clumsy. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. Now, in 1991. Was that your London West End debut, or is this a separate one? No, that because was because in 91. Yeah. You had the Terry Fox experience. Is that That's one right. you just that talking about End. now? Yeah. Because I couldn't believe it. You'd booked to work there for six months, yeah. but it ran for over a year. It didn't ran it? for over a year. How yeah. it, The show was booked in for six months, and the preview was just phenomenal. It right. just broke all box office records yeah. because it was different to what JoJo's had done before. Yeah. And it was a completely different thing yeah well it broke it all just, the records yeah, didn't it was it? sold out it was constantly sold out how the queues were around the block yeah oh that's absolutely brilliant and what what i wanted to ask as well is is your mum still oh, alive yeah, yeah. Great. my mum lives over in marbella and does she love coming to watch it perform? adores it she's my worst critic yeah 
Worst critic yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, and my father. Yeah. They pick up on every family Oh, great, and your about. father is still oh, alive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Isn't that lovely? And yeah. they're both in Marbella. Yeah. How yeah. nice. Yeah. I fly over on uh, this this Friday. Yeah. I fly into Spain for five days to preview my summer show. Right. And do some radio on And what are you going to be and, doing in the summer? Uh, I'm over in Corfu. Yeah. I'm going to Corfu for the first time. Oh. I've been everywhere in the world, but never been to Greece. Really? No, never been so anywhere. So what, what, which venue are you going to be performing in? At the Corfu? moment, I don't know the name of the venue. Ash, that's really unprepared, yeah. isn't it? To come yeah. to a television thing and not know. No, you just and I can't it. remember the name of it. Yeah. It'll be something it probably something like Pathos's Diner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a keep out. Yeah. So are you actually are you headlining or are you? Yes, doing I'm, the whole headlining. Show? I'm headlining. I'm oh, headlining my show. Yeah. So. And with I mean, you've also had appearances in uh, things like Coronation Street, haven't you? Yeah. What did you do in that? Uh, I'd, I'm not really allowed to go into that too much, but I, would, I played male parts in Coronation Street. Did you? Yes, a long time ago, and in Brookside. Oh, yeah. come on. You can't just say yeah. I'm not allowed. I was, that. The, the, the Brookside one I can, that was, I was involved with, which was so many, Cork Hills. It's yeah. about the Cork Hills Brigade. Right. But, yeah, but why can't you say, tell us about Corrie? Well, Corey? the Corrie thing was a long time ago, and there was a lot of... Um, can you stop filming at the moment? Oh, no, we won't carry on about it. Yeah. I'll find out after we've filmed what it was, and then I might tell you next week. All right? No, no, no. I know, I know what you... Uh, I, I can see where you're going with this, because TV can be terribly... Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, they can come after your throat, can't oh, they? Oh, indeed. You, if you're not very... Indeed, yeah. Look at that grin. <laughs> You've got such a... The e teeth are the only things that are my own. Are they your own? Yeah, they're my own. They are amazing yeah. teeth, yeah. and they're so nice because they're not like... You know, you get... We, we do get a lot of ants in here, and they've all had the American veneers... Oh, God, it's ridiculous. ...and Snow White, it's and there is sadly... Too um, yeah. I always think my teeth are white, but I don't want them to they look like no. bathroom fixtures. No, no, I no. I think that looks ridiculous. You're right. There is a touch yeah. of red rum going yeah. on oh, with, yeah. with, with, with some of them. Yeah. And Dan, my lovely Dan, who talks down my ear and everything. They, and they're lovely people, but they go, and we look at each other and we go, teeth? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> teeth have been done. <laughs> so yeah. did you, I mean, do you enjoy acting? Yes, I do. I do like it. Yes, yeah, I do like. And it. I, I, I think they t I think you should have a starring role in Benidorm. I'm telling you. Oh gosh, I marvelous. used to live in Benidorm. Well, listen, we're yeah. going to have another little break, and then we'll be back right. and discuss your new role in Benidorm because you need her. Hi there. Today I'm chatting to a very funny, extremely, extremely talented female impersonator, probably one of the leading ones in the world, Terry Fox, who's kindly come into our humble little studios. It's very nice. It's a nice. It's it's like like your front room. Yes, I was going to say, it's yeah. like sitting in nice. your living room. Look, there's even chocolates there. I know. Oh, I don't. No, they're not an Atkins. Oh, oh, oh are, you, are you I'm Atkins? I'm doing Atkins. Does it work for do. you? It does. It does. Well, I'm doing a cross between Atkins and another chemical diet that I've been sent, so I'm mixing the two together myself but I have actually just lost a stone and a half. A stone, a and, stone a half? and a half I've lost. We're doing the Atkins diet? From I went on it in January the 15th. Yeah. And I've lost a stone and a half. Oh that's the 15th brilliant January. isn't it? Yeah. Are you good at keeping off the wine you see that's no, my doubt. No well I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that alcohol puts weight on you because I've lived in Spain for 11 years yeah. and we guzzle there yeah. 24 hours a day. Yeah. So and I never gained weight with wine. No because you, you go to the loo all the time. It, to yeah. me it's in one end and it's mm. <laughs> you don't, you, it's not inside you long enough to take the calories that's my theory gotcha. anyway but if you've been on the Atkins and you still had your wine and I know. you lost a stone and a half well I seem to be able March, to yeah. episode on three months yeah three months that's great isn't yeah. it do you ever succumb and have the odd chockey I have over Easter yeah yeah an oh. awful lot I was oh. with my grandson so oh. I had more, more chockey than I knew what to do how with. old your grandson he's only three months old oh so he's not old enough to eat them himself yet so how I had lovely. them all how lovely <laughs> Oh, he's gorgeous. Lovely. Now that begs the question, you've just thrown a bombshell in there. Your your grandson, is this your son's son or no, your daughter's, daughter's son? No, And have you just got the one daughter? Two. Two daughters? Two. Oh, lovely. And are you, are you still married to the mother or no, still in touch? No, they're not actually biologically mine. Are they it's not? complicated, you see. No, they're my partner's. Right. My partner's from his first wife. Right, so your partner... But we've been partner, together a long, long time. Lo oh, lovely. So your partner was in a relationship with a woman. Yeah, yeah. And, and... Has two has daughters. Has two daughters. And yeah. they are... And they were wee little 
yeah. girls when, yeah. when we got together. Right. So, so they uh, don't really know a time of the life without me. No, oh, well, that's... that's uh, They'll probably that's be watching this now thinking, no, we don't know no. time without you, do we? <laughs> <laughs> and you get on beautifully with them, do yeah, you? Yeah. That's lovely, yeah. isn't it? And my yeah. eldest daughter's just had a little boy just to, just before Christmas. Another one? Yes. Yeah, so right. Well, just the one. Just yeah. the, she's, don't so you, when one, you yeah. say my eldest daughter, that's your partner's yeah. daughter. Yeah. That's lovely. So you, So for you... This is the family that you haven't had by. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. How lovely! Yeah. And what? How? How have they been growing up with um, their dad and their dad's partner 